How do you make three-dimensional interactive plots like the one on the screen at the moment, where you can move it around, lots of fun, you can go to plot points, see what the coordinates are. This is all done with Plotly, super duper easy. Stick with me, I'm gonna talk you through it right now. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Welcome back to our programming 101. My name is Greg Martin. We're gonna be talking about Plotly. Uh, you can make lovely interactive plots, three-dimensional plots, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to first of all talk you through the plot that's on the screen at the moment. Then I'm going to talk you through some other ones like the one that we saw right at the beginning of this video. So just as, before I show you the code, I want to show you where I'm going with this particular plot. Um, what's nice about this is that it's interactive. So if I take my cursor and I run it over any of these uh, data points, the data that makes that up pops up onto the screen. We've got height, mass, and eye color. Uh, you'll notice that where eye color is blue, the actual plot point is blue. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second because otherwise, you know, by default, R kind of just chooses colors in a way that I don't necessarily completely understand, but you can fix that. Um, this is the Star Wars data set. You'll be familiar with it. It comes as part of the Tidyverse. You know, when you install Tidyverse packages, you get Star Wars. And that means that you have access to this data. You can practice and replicate everything that I'm doing at home in your own time. It's the best way to learn. So uh, let's just look at what Plotly can do in this type of graph. And we're going to look at three-dimensional graphs in just plots in just a second. Plot points are there. And you can see that you can go to any of them and see what the what the data is behind it. You can also look at the, the legend on the side here. You can switch off certain colors and switch them back on as you see fit. You can also download this whole thing as a PNG. You can select a certain section with this little box, et cetera, et cetera. You've got a lasso that can do the same thing. Okay, so it's a really nice, interactive, good-looking plot. Let's take a look at how to create this, and it's super duper easy, I promise you. I'm going to walk you through the code. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail with respect to the actual ggplot coding because I'm assuming you know and understand how to use ggplot. Uh, this isn't a lesson about ggplot, but... Um, it's maybe a little bit of revision if you're not if you know if you want the practice. But take this code, replicate this at home, do it in your own time. It's the best way to learn. Star Wars data set. Now, usually I don't try to create a new object, so I'll just use the Star Wars data set and I'll pipe it into ggplot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm creating an object in this case called P, and that's because I'm going to use P, that data object, as an argument in my plotly function. So you'll see how that works in just a second. But Star Wars, drop NA, that's, you know, we're removing missing values. Uh, we're filtering by mass of just less than 250. The Star Wars data set, by the way, here it is over here. You know it. I love it. It's a great data set to practice with. You've got it at home. Practice in your own time, right? We're filtering by mass of less than 250. That's because some of the Star Wars characters have got this huge mass. And when you do a plot, it kind of skews everything. So let's keep it simple for visual reasons. Um, I'm, I'm also just taking out a handful of eye colors. And I just kept it short because I want to show you something that I do with eye colors in just a second. Uh, aesthetics, X is height, Y is mass, color is eye color, simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, nothing complicated there. I've used GM Jitter instead of plot. Uh, I wanted the plot points not to kind of overlap too much. It didn't make too much of a difference. It could have been geo and point, wouldn't have made much difference. Alpha uh, size is six, nice and big, so you can see it. Alpha 0.5 slightly transparent makes it quite nice now here we've got what i did with the colors if you don't put in this these lines here about uh, scale color manual right r assigns colors to the to the plot points in in a way that i don't necessarily completely understand but it, the plot wouldn't have characters with blue eyes having a plot point that's necessarily blue so i've manually just sort of said blue you know if it sees the word blue it, i want the color to be blue if it sees the word brown, I want the color to be brown. So I've scaled the colors manually. Uh, there might actually be a slicker way of doing that. I'm not sure. I'll get back to you if I figure that out. Theme black and white, that's my go-to theme. It always looks good. Now, this next part's also important, and I just want to walk you through this. Theme legend position, you'll see when I create this plot without Plotly, it's going to pop the legend inside the plot itself, not on the side. And that's just kind of quite a nice thing to do. It's sort of a neat way of presenting your data. I like to do that. And the reason I'm showing you this is because when you run the same code, when you insert this into Plotly, it takes the legend out and pops it on the right-hand side. And the reason for that is so that you can select particular 
categories of data and visualize them and them alone like I showed you a few seconds ago. So just to illustrate that fact, here I've put theme legend position, just so that you understand how this works. Um, this is your sort of X and Y coordinate. So at the X coordinate 0 0.05 means it's gonna be all the way out on the left hand side, 0.98 is right at the top. So it's a, you're talking about coordinates that go from zero to one. If it's zero, it's right on the on the left in, in terms of the X coordinate. If it's if this was one, it would be right at the top. And then legend justification, the top left of that legend would land up at this coordinate, you know, 0 0.05 and 0 0.98, right? Then we've just got our labels. Blah, blah, blah. This all turns into an, a data object called P. If we run P just by itself, so before we use Plotly, this is what we get. And as I said, here it's popped the legend inside the plot itself. It's quite nice, good looking plot, but none of this is interactive, okay? Um, blue eyes, by the way, are blue, you know, orange eyes are orange, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all, that all worked perfectly. Happy days. And you'll notice that when I insert P, the data object that I've created, which is the plot, into ggplotly, it then creates our interactive plot. Okay, and we can have a look at that over here. And this is what we, we, we saw earlier on, and you can switch on and off the various categories. Okay, got it? Super duper easy. We're gonna move on and learn some more Plotly functions in just one second. Next, I wanna have a look at this three-dimensional plot and let's start off. I'm just gonna run the code and then come back and look at it but just so that you can see it. And we did look at this right at the beginning of the video. Here we go. This creates a three-dimensional plot. Again, it's interactive so you can run your cursor over any of the points and it tells you what those coordinates are. And of course, this is more different here just to state the obvious is that this isn't just an X and Y coordinate, but we've got a Z coordinate making it into a three-dimensional plot. Let's look at the code and you will be surprised as to exactly how easy this is. Right, so three-dimensional scatter plot. Trees, the trees data set. Again, this is data that you have. So, you know, there it is on the screen at the moment. It's built into your computer. Replicate the code and do this at home to learn. Trees, pipe it into Plotly. So it's plot underscore ly. And then all we've done is we've defined the x, the y, and the z coordinates with this little, what is this called? Is it called a tilde? Um, girth, height, and volume. Those are our three variables, girth, height, and volume. We run that and of course we get our three-dimensional plot and you can move it around. It's super duper nice. I love it. And the last thing I'm going to show you, and this is just to show you, I'm not going to get into the details of this right now, is that you've also got a surface type plot that it can create. Volcano is a data set that comes built into Plotly just to demonstrate it. Here we've got Plotly uh, and I'm just going to run this, but we'll create another video that gets into surface type plots. But if we run that, we get a lovely visual of this volcano. Okay, I hope you found this useful. We're gonna talk more about data visualization in other videos. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Uh, comment in the comments, share, like, etc., etc. Don't ever change, don't do drugs, always do your best. Speak to you soon, take care, bye.